Good morning, beauties. I'll be panting up the hill, but I wanted to speak about something that, oh my goodness, it's like a real cancer when it comes to love and relationships. And it is a state of mind called rigidity. And inflexibility is essentially rigidity. Wanting things to look a certain way without flow. And uh, my husband and I were watching this show on Netflix all about matchmaking in India. And it was fascinating. I was, I was gripped. And one of the girls that stood out to me that the matchmaker had a lot of trouble with was this lawyer. And I work with a lot of lawyers and I work with a lot of Indians. So I just want to put that out there. And the matchmaker kept saying, oh, this woman is, <laughs> she is so difficult. She is not open. She's very negative. And I love the matchmaker so much. She just was my kind of girl. And she was just saying, look, straight up, you know, you're hard to place because you think that there's no more work to do on yourself. You're saying, this is me, I don't need to change. And it comes from a lot of little girl fear. Just watching this woman on the TV, I was like wanting to reach my arms through the TV to say, sister, you want love more than anything on the planet. She's boxed herself into a career that she doesn't even like. Now I have lawyers that come to me that do love their career and I have lawyers that come to me that realize this isn't what I want to do. And this live isn't like targeting lawyers, this is targeting and speaking to those of you that are operating out of your head when it comes to life, career, and then also you're using that same, that same way of being in relationships and wondering why it's not working out for you. You can't use your head to enter a loving, soul-connected relationship. She is literally treating dating like a spreadsheet and like a numbers game. And on her face, her energy was pure sadness and feeling deflated. And it went back to her little girl trying to please mum. I saw the mother on the show. The mother had such high standards for this girl. She said to her as a little girl, don't let me down. Go and ex excel. So this woman did three degrees. She's now a lawyer, hates her job, and she's just thinking that the guy is going to make her happy and be the cherry on top. And it was painful because the matchmaker was doing her job and she was just bringing men that she thought could actually handle this woman, but they weren't dealing with the source, which is this woman is out of alignment with her joy, with her greatness, with what turns her on. She was like a robot. And I knew inside of her, there was this beautiful heart and quite a fun personality, very deep, deep down, let me tell you. It was kind of hard to watch her because she had boxed herself into a corner so much and she was living out of this much of who she was and then putting in her order to the matchmaker to say, hey, bring me my guy. Why can't you bring me my guy? And oh my goodness, it was chaos. So this is a message to those of you that are high achievers. I work with a lot of women that are super bright, done Harvard, Yale, many PhDs and when they come on a call with my team they're like I just don't understand why I'm a good catch I'm pretty I've got a good family you know I'm fun I all this stuff but they're like I just can't get love off the ground and this is because you're not bringing yourself in at all with any vulnerability and your little girl is running the show you're not in your softness you're not in your woman and by the way, being in our woman can be very, very powerful. Being in our woman and our feminine power is not just, you know, being a pushover at all. Not at all. Being in your glorious feminine power, you can have very fierce as fuck loving energy. So please don't equate being feminine with being submissive or a pushover because it's not the case. It's just as much as I see so many women that are wearing the floral dress and practically daisy chains in their hair thinking, you know, they've got the nails done, thinking they're so feminine. And you speak to them and it's like, it's like talking to a bull terrier. I'm like scared. And I used to be like that. You know, I had so much bravado and I was like, yep, I'm authentic and I'm all these things. Like, where's my guy? And I wasn't being vulnerable. I wasn't in my softness. I wasn't in my glory. I wasn't in my humanity. I was just in this, I've got this, I can do love. Like I was in that kind of energy. I'm going to make this happen and I'm a good catch. And it's incredibly cerebral. And that's why I was single and not meeting my beautiful knight in shining armor because I needed to be that for myself first and needed to get my heart open. So just be aware that when you do come on a call with our team, we're not interested in your CV. 
We're not interested in who you think that you are and what version of you you think you are. We know straight away <laughs> where the issues are and how and if we can help you. But it's going to require you surrendering to the version of yourself that you've been clinging on to and realizing that you need to open up to something a lot more magnificent that's waiting to be realized that's inside of you right now. Because I can tell you right now, you are amazing. You deserve love. You deserve to be supported and held and seen and cherished. But in order for you to really receive that, and I mean receive it when someone says, I love you, I want to marry you, instead of bolting out the back door and going, is this really happening? Is this too good to be true? You need to be in a very grounded, harmonious, loving relationship with yours truly. And there's nothing that can top that feeling when you get that relationship with yourself. Hi, Zoli. There is no man that is going to give you what you're looking for. It's all got to come from you first. And then you attract in a guy that's going to reflect back to you your worthiness, your enoughness, your value. Because you've taken the time and prioritized the time to actually put yourself first and to get clear on what the fuck lights you up, what makes you feel good, what turns you on, what is your flavor, what is your essence. And until you make that a priority, you're going to keep dating cardboard cutouts of men. And then you're going to keep blaming it on the men or the place you live in or COVID or every other thing, your age. And it's none of that. That's an illusion. That's called wanting to deflect and not wanting to take ownership and responsibility for your path. Okay. So that's my message to my high achievers in here that are placing, you know, you're placing your worthiness on what you've done. I wouldn't care if Lady Gaga came to talk to me today. I don't care how many Oscars she's won or what it is. I care about her and her openness and her, and her heart. I wouldn't get caught up in all that celebrity stuff. I just go, sister, are you ready to actually let love in? I'm just using her as an example, you know? It's about truth. It's about taking off the mask and letting us, I'll do that, and letting the world see who you really are. See into your soul instead of being on guard with 65 bodyguards all the time. It's exhausting living like that. It is depleting your health. It's gonna give you anxiety, depression, panic attacks because you're not allowing yourself to receive and that's the divine feminine okay you are worth everything but it's not something that you can tell yourself you've got to do the work to truly integrate that knowing and when you do you will attract in your king it's inevitable okay so ah i got up the hill yeah yeah bella mummy's not too out of puff that's good so i'm sending you time remember that you are the creator of your life you are the creator of your future. And if you don't like the way that it's shaping up, then only you can change that by taking action to do the work to put yourself first. Because I tell you right now, you are born with magic inside of you and a soulmate relationship is your birthright. But attracting in your king is an inside job, all right? And I'm helping women liberate themselves all the time. And it's like watching these fabulous paintings unfold right where women start to realize oh I've got all these different colors about myself oh my god I I can have an orgasm oh my god I am really desirable oh my god oh my god oh my god and it's just it never gets old watching women claim that for themselves and really birthing who they really are into the world and attracting in their king it's fucking epic and I can't wait for that to be you all right but you got to choose you first Mwah.